Okay, this is Paul, and today, next to my bench, <laughs> because it's too big to put on my bench, I have a bun coffee maker. This is a pour-over style bun coffee maker. It has two separate burners, a lower burner and an upper burner. And it's a pour-over in that you pour the pot of water in here, put the coffee in the basket, which is not on it right now, and the water automatically goes into the tank, causing the tank to overflow. Um, the tank is already heated, so the water's hot, comes through the spout and fills the pot. And the way they work is the amount of water you pour in here is the amount of water that overflows and comes out as through the coffee filter, through the coffee container and into the pot. Um, this one has a broken switch. The switch still works, but it's it's broken, so I'm going to replace the switch. Um, it is a VPR series, and uh, it's a nice bun coffee maker. Uh, it'll make a pot of coffee in about two minutes, so no waiting. <laughs> and um, we're going to service this one. We're going to clean it. Obviously, it needs a good cleaning and fix the switch and i already took the screws out of the top so and took this off put it back on so you can see how it goes and those two wires connect to the upper burner and we'll set the burner aside so you have these two switches here one for the upper burner and one for the lower burner and that turns the element the heating elements on and off so the upper burner switches the top one which goes to this um, these two wires and turns this burner on um, that works fine the lower one like i said works but the switch needs to be replaced so the switch just clips in here we're going to unclip the switch and put a new switch in we're also going to disassemble it and clean it uh, i've done a bun coffee maker before but i didn't uh, record a demo video so on this one i figured i would do a little more this little brace here slides over the container lid here and locks it in place you take that off and then you have your not there to disconnect it the top pan and you can see the tank in there and we're going to clean out the tank get all the lime deposits out of it and make sure everything's working okay check the electronics be sure the switch is working fine we might need to adjust it uh, this is the thermostat control that turns on the heating elements and turns on the tank actually i believe yeah and so uh, this controls the temperature of the water in the tank that comes through the coffee. Um, and we're going to check that out. Under here, we have, let me get my camera under there, we have the spray head here, which just unscrews. I'm going to take that off. And you can see it needs to be, I'll put it on my desk here, it needs to be cleaned. Might need to replace it. Yeah, it looks pretty nasty. Um, but that might clean off. I don't know. Uh, it looks pretty nasty. I might just replace the spray head, put a new spray head on this unit. If I can't clean that up good. I don't want to put too much into it because these pots can get can start getting expensive. But I do want to reservice it and get it working again. It's a really neat coffee maker and if it requires expending a little money then I might just do it anyway. Anyway we'll go through the whole process and uh, walk through how to how to rebuild one of these units. Um, I have another one too that I might be working on I'll do in a separate video which is a rarer unit. It's a much older unit. It, the whole unit is uh, stainless steel. But this one has a stainless steel upper area probably tin tank here and then stainless steel bottom the other one is completely stainless steel and a much nicer unit um, uh, much
much more expensive unit. However, they both make the same exact cup of coffee. <laughs> so um, we'll go with that. But let me get, get a time to uh, take this uh, section apart here, and then we'll continue the video. I'll be right back. Okay, I took that nut off, which held the tank in. It's not here. Interesting little guy. And discovered that on the bottom was this washer that's in really good shape amazingly so, silicon i think and here is the tank and we see that all of these are in really good shape imagine this has been serviced not that long back so uh we have a date on the tank that it, the unit was made which dates it as august 16 2010 so um, it's not a very old unit, which is, I had figured it was probably uh, 205 or 207, but it's newer than that. These are in really good shape. You hear that seal when I took it off. This is the thermostat here, which measures the water temperature and turns this thermostat on and off for the heating element in the tank, which is here. And you can see there's water in the tank, so I'll have to drain it out. But that's the thermostat. Again, it's in good shape. I don't see any corrosion. Looks like it has been well taken care of. Could be cleaned a little. We'll just set that right there. Uh, this is the overflow hose, and it has a good uh, seal on it, nice and tight. So that's a good thing. We'll be taking that off. And, uh, I might just service this tank while it's in the unit, I don't know, but I still got to get that out in order to take the lid off the tank. Uh, actually, this may be a sealed unit. It's a little different than the ones I've worked on in the past. I think it's probably a sealed unit. Uh, the uh, older style had a cover that was would come off with the um, with a big gasket all the way around. So apparently they eliminated that gasket by uh, making it a sealed tank because you can take the heating element out here. So we will do that. We'll take the heating element out and um, clean it. This is the uh, temperature, high temperature control. The water got too hot. Something went faulty with the thermostat or whatever and the water got too hot this metal would contract, uh, I'm sorry, would expand. And when it expands, it would pop away from the contact that it makes, thereby shutting the power off to the heater to protect the unit from being overheating, just like a, a space heater would do. It's a shut off switch, safety switch. So let's check the heater element. I'm curious to see if it's as good a shape as the rest of the components. I don't know. Let's see, maybe I can do this and balance my phone. If not, I'll just be back soon. I don't really want to drop those nuts down in the tank, so that's my only concern there. Yeah. Let's see if we get the right top here. Nope, a little bigger. Let's try this one. Good time. A charm, maybe? Getting them out of my case is not easy either. Okay. There we go. with this one because it seemed like a stubborn one. You know, there's always one stubborn one. That's uh, Murphy's Law. And it's usually the last one you go to take out. So I try to take out the, take it out first. So I can figure it out. <laughs> you know, 
kind of neat when you get the worst one off first and then all the rest come off easier than taking the easy ones off and then you go to get the last one off and you got to go looking for pliers and vice grips and everything else that just gets you all flustered and frustrated. Okay. heating unit and it is in really good shape like everything else in this tank so I'll do a little cleaning on that and set this over here with the other piece get the gasket off gently yeah those are they've been replaced not that long back still might put a new gasket kit on I don't know yet um, you can see, probably see in the bottom of the tank. Hold on, let me get some light in here. Okay. You can see down there in the bottom of the tank. We got some debris. That's what we want to get out. So, next step is pump out the water. And clean out that tank bottom a little bit. And that's just lime deposits that build up from whatever water source that we use. And actually, it's not bad. I've seen a lot worse. I've seen them um, where they, uh, where you couldn't even clean them. They were so bad. But this one is not going to be that bad. So, the next step is, uh, I'm probably going to, I hate to take this tank out. I'd like to do it while it's in the machine. But we'll see. Um, Oh, let's, let's see what we got here on the switch. Okay, we got three wires on the bottom there. The white, white, and the black. So, let's go ahead and disconnect those. I'm working on that switch out. I still haven't ordered a switch yet. So, I'm going to make a material list and order the things that we need as we for it. And that's number one. And then I'll go ahead and number these. Number two is the red stripe, and then the black goes to number three. Okay. And now the switch itself should just collapse. to worry about breaking it, it's already broken. Okay, I might have to put the phone down and to do that. It's going to be a two-hand job. I have to basically just push those in, these tabs, on both sides of the switch, and it'll pop through the face cover. So I'm going to put, put this down, put it in a hole, and get that out. Okay, and there we have it. There's the faulty switch. Somebody just hit it. Yeah, but uh, what's cool? If I see if I can get it under, you can see inside there. There's a couple of resistors, and uh, one's a light emitting diode. The other one's a resistor. So it gets its power right off the line in order to light up the switch when you turn it on and off. So we'll have to replace that switch. And then start, I'm just going to clean it out and get all this crud out of here as much as I can. And uh, work on cleaning out the tank and then we'll continue the video when we put it back together. 
And now I'm going to take the hose off. I already took it loose here. And basically under here, it had a nut. You just take the nut off and this pipe comes up. And then you free it from this by just turning it back and forth. This one already taken it out. So let me just show you that. And so that's what it looks like there. And that's what the spray head screws onto. I like to put the components together so that it helps you remember how they were. In this case, it's kind of simple, but let me screw that on there a little bit. I know you can't see it. And we know that that goes on there. And by the way, this is cleaning off pretty well. This head, apparently that's just coffee, so it's coming right off, see? I'll be able to clean that and save it too. This unit must have been in a commercial location. The next thing is to try to take the tank out. I'm going to drop my... This coffee pot back down off. Yeah, I don't know what happened there, I might have lost it. But what I was saying was... Uh, when you take screws out of a device like this, put the screws back in the unit. Put them back in there. Don't try to lay them on your uh, bench or a table or whatever and then try to figure out where they go. Because you know something's going to mess it up. Uh, the cat don't knock them on the floor and the vacuum cleaner swallow them. Then who knows what's going to happen to them, but they're going to disappear. Now, uh, another thing too is, you notice I took that screw out here and I tried to put it in there and it was be giving me some headache. When you're putting screws back, even though they're similar screws, you'd be surprised how many times, especially working on older vintage items, that just switching the screws around, they'll go in a whole lot easier if they're the same screws going into the same kind of holes, rather than trying to fight them. Um, a lot of times in wood cabinets, you'll find that the screws will fit into one cabinet a whole lot easier than fitting in the other. Well, that answers the question of is the tank connected on the bottom? I just moved it and it moved. You might be able to get this screw in there by a hole in the phone. It's so close to the case, my fingers can't get in there. Oh, I got it. You can just screw it down enough times where you know it ain't gonna unscrew and fall out on its own because you know, Murphy's Law. Okay, now we get the tank disconnected, except for this one wire. And we want to, oh, I think I shut you off, no. We want to take the wires and we know where they go. That one goes there, and that one goes to the switch, the blue wire. And the other wires Oh, the other wire is still on the, uh, the the heat of element. The black wire that goes goes from the heat of element to here. So now we get this heavy tank full of water here. It makes it so much easier to empty it out when we can get it out. But I'm gonna have to stop for a second and disconnect this other heat of element. I'm gonna put you back on pause. Okay, I got the tank out. I disconnected these wires. They go to the top switch on both sides of these two outside terminals. Um, so things like this, this is all AC, alternating current. So it doesn't matter which way you put these wires. It doesn't matter which wire goes on which side. So you don't really need to mock these kind of things. Uh, as long as it's all AC, you don't need to worry about it. If it was direct current, you'd have to have the polarity correct, so you'd have to mark which one went on which side, but uh, this is a fully AC unit, so no brainer. And these two wires go to an, a secondary outside heating element here that wraps around the can. Um, it's a different style than I've seen. 
You see how it's wrapped under that foil up and down and it goes around the can. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing there. Some kind of resistor. It says it's a 55 watt uh, Bonomatic can. Again, 910. So it's the original can. It's September 10th, 2010. And uh, the part number here. Mm. Okay, so this is what I was talking about, about the can being sealed here. You see this seam is, it's either pressed, it's probably pressed because it seems like it's pressed there, not welded so much, but it might be uh, sealed, soldered and welded, uh, impressed, I mean. And this tank is full, so I'm about to go empty it um, and work on trying to get in there and do some cleaning. Um, but I wanted to show you the disassembled unit. The inside of the box is pretty clean. We just have to do a little, little cleaning there. Mostly this is overspill where they, somebody probably poured coffee through the top of the machine instead of water. But then you have a schematic diagram inside this particular unit, which shows where the wires go and how the switches are connected and, and all of that. But, uh, it's pretty simple and self-explanatory. Um, anyway, I uh, appreciate you watching the video. After I get this cleaned up, I'll add to it and we'll conclude. Okay, I'm finishing the reassembly of this tank. I already got the thermostat in, uh, the, the heater rather, um, and the thermostat. And the tank is clean. Got, got it really cleaned and deoxide. Um, putting on the uh, overflow hose now. Got the switch, the new switch in, which is the same as previous switch, so they're match set. And uh, that's in place. And I'm just going to reassemble this and um, put the spray head back on, put the lid on, and go make a pot of coffee. Well, we have the tank in the water tank and the support bracket and everything else is ready to go this connects to the top heater um, but i'm going to leave the cover off because i'm probably going to take the uh, tank out to drain the water um, after i do a test on it but this is where we're at right now i put the bolt on the bottom and here's the spray nozzle just screws on there. Like that. And you just put it on hand tight, plenty tight enough. And we're ready to go. We'll do a test and conclude this video. Yeah, because